good morning. Today is April the 30th, 2008, and we are here with Andrew Venable. And if you would say for the camera um, your com full name and your birthday and place of birth. I am Andrew Alexander Venable, Jr., and I was born in Stanton, Virginia, S-T-A-U-N-T-O-N. It's spelled one way and pronounced an another, as uh, there are some uh, cities in, 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 the, in the South. I was born on November 11th, 1944. Okay. And is that um, where your, can you tell us about your parents? Did, were they born in Virginia? Or let us know about your background, will you? I was born to a good family. My mother and father were born in Stanford, Virginia. They were. And their names? And, and then my father's name is Andrew A. a. Venable, Andrew Alexander Venable Sr. Uh -huh. My mother's name is Catherine uh, Ware Venable. Okay. Yeah, her middle name is Virginia, but her, uh, her uh, maiden name is Ware. Ware. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they were born there, yeah. and uh, they had uh, four children. I'm the oldest of four boys. Are you the four boys? Yeah. Okay. Now, now your parents were born there. Where, where were your grandparents? My grandparents were born also in, in Virginia. Virginia. Yeah, so you Virginia. have a long line. Long lineage in, in Virginia. And, and uh, on my father's side, my father's father died when he, my father was 10 years old. So I never got a chance to know, know meet him. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, uh, Elnora Venable, uh, I, my best buddy. Okay. And uh, so we, I had a chance to really know her, and to she was an active part of my life. Was she in how so? Uh, an active part of my life because uh, she was a maid uh, for a, a fa the whole single family in Staten Virginia, a white family. She was a maid for them. Mm -hmm. And what she would do took me on uh, the Sunday after Christmas. She had to work on uh, for Christmas for the family as a maid, good family. She would also ask the Venables to schedule that date, the Sunday after Christmas, to get together for dinner. And she always had that, and she would put the china, the, the, the linens, and wow. you had everything you could think of for, 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 for the, I mean, a spread for the family dinner the Sunday after. And she did it every, every, all the time when we came along. For her family. For her the family. Venables. And the pastor would be there, and some of her friends. Uh -huh. she, and she'd have it. Another thing she did one time when I became a teenager, had my brothers and I to uh, want to do the same thing for us, not with the adults that she had. Had the same dinner, not at the same time, but scheduled a dinner for mm -hmm. us. And my friends just loved it. Wow. Each one of us invited our friends. My grandmother was there. She just sat and smiled. She just sat and smiled and just enjoyed it. And, the, and I thought we were going to leave. And my, my fellows didn't want to leave that day. They stayed the whole afternoon. I would be there an hour and all that. But they, and they still talk about it. Is that right? My grandmother would, uh, did the that for us, and, 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 that, and that was the influence. And then my grandmother was active in the Mount Zion Baptist Church where I was baptized. Okay. And uh, in that church, uh, she, was, she, was, she was a deaconess. And many people who came to Stanton, I mean, T.J. Jemison came through. He, he was a pastor of the, my church and before I came along, Mount Zion Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And they would always eat at, 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 at uh, Ms. Venable's house. And, 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 and I, we met him, as, uh, young boys, I mean teenagers down there, he came because he had a guard with him. Mm -hmm. He was coming through the South during mm -hmm. civil rights time. Mm -hmm. And we didn't understand that, so he explained it to us. Did he? Yes. The education was doing, began uh, and, and, and all. Right there, he was T.J. Jemison, Reverend T.J. Jemison, came to my grandmother's house, she had a big spread for him down there, it was outside uh, 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 dinner. Wow. And Because it was new to us, and he, and he shared with us mm -hmm. about some of the civil rights time. Wow. Another thing she did, uh, 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 I used to babysit my, her mother, her great-grandmother, I knew, my, my, my great-grandmother, Elvira uh, Velvin. And, she, and, and so uh, I used to babysit her. And when my great-grandmother <coughs> died, uh, my grandmother gave me a gift. And I don't know how she figured this out, this gift. Gave me the gift of music. Uh, I'd want to play the piano. We couldn't afford a piano. So she'd call Mrs. Waller, a teacher up there at Book to Washington High School, where I went to school. And Mrs. Waller said, well, he, he plays the tonette, a small one. He plays the tonette. She took that, went over to the show, to the music in, in, in Stanton, which was an integrated music school. And Martin G. Manch was the proprietor. He was German. And he recommended the clarinet. My grandmother paid for four and a half years of credit lessons for me. And I don't know, in, in the whole single home that had one child, I don't remember music. But how, I'd like to ask her how she selected that as a gift. Best thing I could ever think of. She gave that to me as a gift. 
And she did that, and um, so I've always enjoyed that because that's, and then I passed that gift down to my grandchildren. Yes, yes. I have three grandchildren, and I paid for their uh, music lessons. Yes. At the Cleveland Musical Settlement. Right. Well, the oldest grandchild plays uh, cello, the uh, uh, little one plays a piano, and the grandson plays uh, cello. I can, I can reverse. No, the oldest one plays violin, okay. and, and the grandson plays a cello. But the, and my daughter, so I'm going to let them know how that passed out. Yeah, and you're putting this on tape, so. Yeah, and, and I'm very it. proud because I think that's what you. You have to do what I think you should do. Right. But but I look in my home of Stanton, Virginia. There's about twenty, about twenty one thousand people when I grew up there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's the seat of the city government, the form of government in the nation, and uh, we had uh, integrated housing, but we had separate accommodations. Okay. But you had the respect for people and property, mm -hmm. and you had respect for elders. Mm -hmm. And I think we came under that environment. And then your teachers were revered. Yes. And so they were like, like your substitute parents. Yes. And you did not talk back to adults. Right. right. And I think uh, that type of training, that would, of course, be it having, uh, uh, say, I came through a seven years edu public education, but didn't say we, we didn't have a good environment. All of my teachers, uh, when I came along with high school, had a bachelor's degree in a historical black college or university mm -hmm. and a master's in Cornell or Columbia. And we had small class size. My geometry class had 10. Yeah. Yes. And our school was small, we only had one, one sport, a basketball. And then it means if you were there, you ended up, you, you um, did different, more than one thing. Mm -hmm. I was active in student government on, on, the, on the student uh, uh, newspaper for the Book to Watch High School. Were you? Yes. And in National Honor Society. Well, so you, you had to do more than one thing. I was in the course, and I was in the band. Marching back into the chorus. You were in the chorus <laughs> and the band. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> but but here again, but but look at what that how that contributed to your your confidence and development. That's right. And my grandmother told me one thing about um, taking a clarinet. Said uh, said Andy, you you uh, uh, as you go into your lessons, you have to walk. I walk about a half mile mile. Said some boys may, may ridicule you because you're not playing trumpet or or, or a drum. Mm -hmm. But but just let you know that you, you you keep on going. You keep on going. And I remember this because it came uh, any time we achieved uh, in in sports or uh, or, or scholarship or music, our principal, Mr. Arthur Arthur Arwell Jr., would announce it at in, in, in the assembly. So I came one time. My grandmother, what my grandmother told me, came to light. I uh, came one day, and Mr. Webb mentioned I had uh, one musical contest at the Stone Jackson Hotel. I think Qantas was responsoring a James Bland contest. And I passed by this young man I know, and, and he spit in my face. I just kept walking. Good. But what she said came to light. Yes. Yeah, she prepared but, you. Yeah, but, but then the music part. Now, we could not go to the YMCA. We couldn't go to the, in the hotels. No, no, not in Virginia, not in Stanton at that time. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, our professor, Martin G. Manch, had the show to the music. And he held the uh, fall concert for his students uh, in, in, in his match in his home. And the spring concert was held in Y. I got into the YMCA four years, four and a half years, wow. through music. I got into the front door of the Stormwood Jacks Hotel by participating in this contest uh, by Clarinet. So I got into yeah. two places. Two places. Yeah. Outstanding. Tell me a little, just a little bit about your parents before we move forward. Okay. Um, what, what type of work did your father do? My, my father uh, was a welder at, at when he, at his last job. He was a, when we first came along, he was a, tr uh, a truck driver for Ford's Fine Furniture Company. And then the owner of that died. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he was able to get a job at Westinghouse. Okay. And he was a welder. He was a welder. Yeah. Uh, and then my mother was a retail, uh, well, first she was an elevator operated at Lig Liggett's department store at one time. And then after that, she was at the and she was at Mary Bowman College, worked in the library as an assistant for a while, and then she retired from uh, Woolworths as okay. a retail uh, salesperson out there at, 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 in the shopping mall. And, and church was an important part of your upbringing? Yes, it was, because the church, you had a ch time between the church, the school, and the family. I say, I say, for instance, my church was a Mount Baptist church, where I was baptized by Reverend James O. Powell. 
my pastor was a nephew of Dr. Benjamin E. Mays, President Morehouse College. Whoa. That's how I had a chance to meet Dr. Mays because mm -hmm. we had three major large, large churches uh, uh, there on uh, Augustine Methodist Church, Ebenezer Baptist Church, and Mount Zion Baptist Church on the same street. And they never had a conflict on Women's Day or Men's Day, so they would bring uh, these pastors, or learned pastors, would bring guests to Stanton. Mm -hmm. And I know uh, we had Dr. Benjamin Mays as a, as a lay person, lay, lay day speaker at Mount Zion Baptist Church, and Ms. Walla again in her class assignment. We had to learn about Dr. Mays, and we had to plan to attend, and we had to write down every new word we heard, look up the definitions, and be prepared for a spell test on the next Friday. And she was there. That was to make sure you yes. paid attention. Yes, and, and I mean, he's, he's spoken, who are the least of these, my, my brethren? I think he spoke for an hour and some minutes, and I think I had more about two pages of words. Really? <laughs> and, and we all write these words down and some phonetically written, you know. Yes, yes. And we heard these words, but here again he stood so erect. And uh, he, uh, and one person in Cleveland reminds me of Dr. Mays a lot is Dr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Otis Moss, Jr. Does he? As his aging looks just like Dr. Mays. No kidding. Yes. And the statue in the statue way he and all. Cares, yes. Like an eagle comes into the, and Dr. Mays just stood there without a note. And one thing about uh, the churches when they had uh, had these programs, integrated audiences. We had Mary Baldwin College, and and, and the different churches would, would show up for, for these programs. No kidding. Yeah, because we, we had we, we had renowned speakers that came, some college presidents, because these pastors knew them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that it was a tie in that. But here your teacher was there too, mm -hmm. assignment for schoolwork. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, that was good. And then now we now Ms. Waller required us to uh, also have a subscription to the Reader's Digest. Not a copy of school, but that was her requirement. Okay. You had that, so it to help to uh, uh, enhance the 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 the, the what's the, uh, going on, what the was world, on in the world. Yes. Wow, how impressive! So you graduated from Booker T. Washington High School. Booker T. Washington yes. High School. In nineteen sixty-three. In nineteen sixty-three, <laughs> and then you decided to go on to. High I went went to Virginia State at that time. It was called Virginia State College in Petersburg, Virginia. And now it's called Virginia State University. It's okay. larger, and I, I went there. And I was a business major. I see. Business administration degree. Okay. Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, and my major emphasis was marketing. Okay. I finished there at 67, but they had one commencement. I finished the summer of 67. I only had one commencement, I had to come back. I came back, and the degree shows uh, of 68 because that's, they gave one, one degree a year. Yes. <laughs> so yes. I came back in March, got my degree in 1968. Wow. And, and just tell us a little bit about your path and your, your adult life and how you perhaps ended up in this position that you're in. <laughs> Just give us a, you know, <laughs> an overview. Well, I, I finished um, uh, uh, at Virginia State College, but I had gone, I'd had two internships in summertime. One was in an uh, in industrial bank in Washington, D.C. for one summer. There was an internship from the business school. Mm -hmm. And then I had uh, one with Ohio, a marketing trainee in the summer of 66. And my job was to present to Ohio the retail outlet picture, retail competition picture for Hunter, West Virginia, Ashton, Kentucky, and the five surrounding counties. And that was my job, present to them that picture. And, 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 and so I, must, I did a pretty good job because I was featured in, in the Ohio Mar marketing newspaper, marketing newspaper. And I had a good assignment that summer. And what happened was at the end of that, they paid for my last year of college. They gave me a full, uh, a full-time job offer. Okay. So you knew I was get, having interviews when I went back, but I knew I was going to Ohio in the mm -hmm. corporate world. So that's how I got got to uh, so Ohio when I came. Uh, they wanted me to be in Columbus, for, come to Ohio for training. So I did that, and then they found out I had been employed. So the persons who work, I worked with in Portsmouth Sales Division, Hugh Hanna, uh, he had now gone to Detroit, Michigan, because when you're going to operate out of the state of Ohio, it could not be so Ohio name. Boron Oil Company. Oh. They finally wanted me back, so they moved me from, when I finished out school, they moved me immediately from there to be on the new market development team for, for uh, in Detroit, Michigan for Boron Oil Company. Wow. So, so uh, and then from that, and, 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 and then from that, uh, he thought I needed some experience in, in home office personnel, so he moved me from Detroit, Michigan to Cleveland, Ohio in 1968. No and I came as a home office personnel assistant for Ohio and Midland Building, mm -hmm. and I was there. And then I moved. Then someone came and saw me uh, from uh, there and said, "Why are you? Why are you here? We need you back up in marketing." 
And then they, they moved me and promoted to the uh, uh, capital budget analyst for the marketing department of Ohio. No kidding. And then you know, the BP situation was starting. Charlie Spar was the president, uh -huh. and he called us down and let us know about that. And and uh, we knew then life had changed. And then I tried to start a, a, a paint manufacturing company in, in Freeport, Grand, ba Grand Bahamas. And that didn't go. Okay. <laughs> so, I, so I stayed there for four or five months. Then I came back here. So how I found I had returned, wanted me back. I said, well, I, my resume was out there then. And so I decided to, uh, uh, so I'm, uh, I, I have pride, but I, I will return if I don't have a final job. Well, the, 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 an interesting job came about with that four job offers, and Clean Public Library was one of them. And, uh, uh, and Walter Curley was the director, and he wanted to bring in people with different experiences, and so I was hired as the uh, assistant director of personnel. He wanted me to be the director of personnel, but, but someone indicated he'd be good for number two. Okay. That's why the assistant director of Clean Public Library was hired versus before the director was. Of personnel, a, yeah. No kidding. And then the person who, uh, uh, Earl Peoples, you know Earl Peoples' name, Earl Peoples. Mm -hmm. When I was here and, and, and gotten back and said, well, don't, we don't want you to promise that. He was with the Urban League, I think. Uh, just talk to this new director of the, uh, of, of the library. The Urban League's been trying to uh, encourage them and the people of the to have some uh, uh, representation and management and, uh, of minorities. So I talked to Walter Curley, and, 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 and I, he wanted me, and I decided to accept. Isn't that something? But here again, the Cleveland Connection, the Urban League. Yeah. Anita Polk was at the Urban League then. And oh, so no forth. kidding. Yeah. So no I kidding. did that, and uh, then I was at Cleveland Public Library. I became that. And uh, then uh, a job opened up as, as a business manager and treasurer at that time. Uh, just business manager because the clerk treasurer is elected by the board. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, so uh, uh, Walter Curley wanted me for that. Uh, so I became the business manager for the library system, and the board elected me clerk treasurer. No kidding. Then, uh, uh, then next time, uh, uh, the next director was uh, Irvin Gaines. Dr. Irvin Gaines was here, and, um, uh, and one uh, one person, Helen Summons, was here as our equal employment opportunity officer, and, and I was going to go to another degree, MPA. I was I was accepted at Cleveland State and Case. She said, "Well, get your union card first, but she meant to get your library degree." I'd been here for a while, and I had never thought about it, mm -hmm. so I listened. Mm -hmm. And I went to you Case. Listen. I listened to her. I went to Case Western Reserve University, the Baxter School of Library and Information Science, and I received my Master of Science Library Science degree. I After I received the degree, Dr. Gaines, uh, I had not applied to be the head of branches of Outreach Services, and so uh, uh, he said, "Andy, now that you have your degree, uh, we want you to consider being the, the, the head of branches." And I hadn't applied. And think about it. It was on a Friday. Think about it, and I got back to him on Monday. I said, "You know the system more than I do. If you think I'm the most qualified, I accept." I and I accepted that position as head of branches outreach services. We had 36 branches there, mm -hmm. so I was really operationally responsible for all the public public library services outside of the main library mm -hmm. complex. Outstanding. So it didn't seem like. So I backed into a, a brand new career. Yes. But here again, with marketing, and what, what I was embarrassed one time before I went to library school. I was, someone asked me a question on the phone, and said, well, where do you work? It says, right down on the third floor. And I, said, I, went, and I had to understand what reference was and okay. catalog it. I went to understand, so, because I didn't want to be embarrassed with that. Yeah. But I, I finished the degree. Isn't that something? That is outstanding. So your career, your, your business background, and marketing has carried you well. It has. And it has helped you to cross color lines, too. It has. Where other people may have had problems. So education was key. Education was key, and education still is the key. You still have lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. And I still try to keep up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've gone to the Harvard uh, uh, Senior Exec Program before. Okay. And, and that's been uh, John F. Kennedy School. Mm -hmm. And I've had many contacts with that. But here again, marketing is connected with people. Once yes. I understood what the product was, yes. so how I know petroleum products, but here, information is a product. Yes. In marketing, it's, it's still about connecting people with the product. Yes. So it's still customer service. Yes. So yes. information is still a, a major product that yes. changes in all formats. Yes. It's always going to be with us. Right, right. And when I understood the history of the library and the public library movement in this country, mm -hmm. then how do we connect it to people? Mm -hmm. 
in urban areas, we need people who like people who want to connect information, to yeah. connect them with information. And I think when I understood that, mm -hmm. and everyone has a different leadership role. Yes. And but no, I, I this has been a, a, an enjoyable career. Yes, yes. And it's something you use all the time. All the time. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. I I like the the slogan, the People's University. <laughs> 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 now, did that come out of your marketing background? <laughs> it did. But, 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 you know, that came up. I, I was a director. Of, when I left, I left. I was here at Cleveland Public Library the first time for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Then I became a director at uh, East Cleveland Public Library for five years. Mm -hmm. You know, then they, the people wanted me, and I kept saying no. Gary Public Library, and I was there for the library system for four years, and then the in the other location technical college as a regional librarian for one year. But when I was the director of the Gary Public Library the, the, uh, in that university, we had several colleges that were represented in Gary, and they invited me to be a speaker for lunch. Mm -hmm. I said, what am I going to say? You know, they think there's a whippersnapper. He's not going to say anything. I, I, had a, I had a paper towel one day, and I jotted down, I, I tried, I, in my mind, compared a college university to a public library. And I cited in the yellow pages and white pages in Gary, Indiana, all the names of the colleges and universities that had some representation in Gary, I think about five or six. And I list them down. Then I compare them to, 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 to university. And I, that's how I got my seven P's somewhere. And, uh, uh, and I, that's what I said right here. We had, uh, they have admission, tuition, enrollment, requirement, curriculum, faculty, and, and I call passport. And my item, I said, I, uh, we had free admission. Okay. <laughs> Tuition is publicly funded. Enrollment is open. <laughs> Requirement, self-initiative. Curriculum, lifelong learning. Mm -hmm. uh, faculty, we have, we have trained a credential staff. And your passport, not a degree, but it's a library card. All right, all right. And, and, so, and, and so I was done talking to them one time and said, okay. I had, uh, I said, I, I, I cited, you have all, all of the, uh, universities but one. You're missing one whose mission uh -huh. is more universal than yours. Yes. You looked at me and said, what is going on? It's more, it's more universal. The, mi the mission. Provide mm -hmm. access to information. Mm -hmm. You're missing that. I listed all of them. You're missing the Peach University. Ah. The Peach University. And that's why I said Gary Pepper Library. Then I said Peach University. I, I call them Peach University at that luncheon. Is that right? That's and, right. And, and, and I had all these little, little, little measurements I had said that right down here when I came here. Yeah. And, and, and what caught me with that was that um, the presence came up afterwards when I was speaking and said, you know, Venable, that's what it is. We haven't thought about it that way. They came and said, that's what the public library is. That came from them. My first uh, engagement at the, speaking for all the presidents. Exactly. And I've used it ever since. Exactly. Yes. Wow. Outstanding. And then I've had people here come to Cleveland a lot of times and say, you know, and I always talk to people's university. Uh, because now Andrew Connolly, the big benefactor for libraries in the country, I was reading in his biographical information about he had said universe of the people somewhere in, in, in his, from his lips. And I just coined the University. That is outstanding. Now, tell us about this position that you're holding now. Mm -hmm. this, is the, this is a very prestigious position. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's with the third largest public research library system in our nation. Ours Cleveland, is? Yeah, Cleveland Public Library. It's been around since 1869. Mm -hmm. we've, we've had 16 directors of the libraries. I'm, I'm the 16th director. You're the 16th. And I happen to be the first African-American director of the system. And, and we are fortunate in Cleveland to have a library service outlet located within one mile of most of our residents. You can take public transportation, walk or drive. So the access to the information is where you are. And we have to hold on to that. Because yes. it's unheard of in most places to have an outlet that close. Yes. And so, but, but I think, uh, and then we've had people that um, have supported us, have supported us through two levies. Yes, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a legacy for you in particular. During turbulent financial times, yes. you've been able to get the levies passed. And I think what happens on marketing, to connect that to marketing and promotion is promotion and partnerships. I think promotion and partnerships and your professionalism mm -hmm. have gone a long way when we, we had to connect with the people. Now, I will admit, the biggest challenge I had was uh, in 2002, when Congressman Dennis Kucinich conducted and held his own his first town hall meeting with his library system. 
on the west side near Walter Branch Library. We had planned to, uh, the head of branches and I supported a recommendation to standardize branch aisles on both sides of the river. Well, we, he held a meeting and to which I wasn't going to attend, but I changed my mind and decided to attend and said, could we present and bring to the meeting the, the documentation that supported the decision all the factors, yes, you could, we'd be glad to receive you. Mm -hmm. Got to the meeting, and there's a chair for me, and one for a priest sitting next to me. And, and Dennis Kucinich, when I got there, I said, Mr. Venom, Director Venom, would you take the seat? I took the seat. Not the trustee president, not anyone else, but I'm up there. It was a crowded house at night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, wow. so uh, uh, and then he indicated that, uh, well, that to, to, to share our concerns about this proposed management change. And 42 people came to the microphone to testify. No kidding. 42 people. And I've been in meetings where, where, where they were conducted in a more venomous way. This was not done that way. Mm -hmm. And some man said, I want the director to speak now. I looked at the congressman, she said, told the audience, Director Venable will, will speak after all of you have spoken. Then another man came up there and said, Director Venable? He said, yes, you have all of the factors but one. One you don't have is community input. So my time came to speak. Uh, I said, thank you, thank the congressman, and thank you for giving respect to my board of trustees on staff being here. And uh, the gentleman who came up indicated we had all the facts but one. You were correct, we don't have community input. That's why I came to listen. And thereafter, wow. thereafter, since 2002, I'm the new director, I'm the director in 1999. It's a little frightening. So, but I'd known the congressman. He's a card-carrying member of this library system, too, but active with library card. But I've been to meetings before. I've been here before. I came to Cleveland in 1968, so I've been to the library since 1970, so I've had some mm -hmm. inter in, interworkings with the sure. organizations. But, but that, that was frightening. And during the director, so I came through. I decided not to do it. Uh, we canceled it. The board supported by uh, <coughs> retracting the plan. And we took that uh, as external stimuli, and we took that and got to a local consultant and national consultants, library consultants nationally, and held these, they conducted these town hall meetings throughout, well, my God, we had 10 or 12, and listened to the people. That's how we got the five library service initiatives. Wow. And, two, and, then the, and, then they, and that, that led to the development of the strategic plan that covers for five years. Wow. Outstanding. And, and, then, and then that became the board, the board approved the strategic plan in, in December of 2002. And then that, that became our rallying cry. That became the, the support basis for the tax levy, uh, property tax levy increase we, that we took to the voters in May of 2003. And I was upset one day because we were having a difficult time. And I said, uh, let the people aspire. And those are my words to the media. And they aspired by a 60% passage. 60 percent. Difficult time. Difficult time. And then the same library service initiatives, well, that, that library five-year thing expired into this year, into this, this year. Uh, we, we took the same five library service initiatives that they voted for, presented to the voters on the town meetings and all, and uh, passed by 65 percent on, on March 4th. But it, 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 since, since, 2000, since those town meetings in 2002, we, I still have held a town hall meeting every April to serve in uh, National Library Month, and it's been rebroadcast on cable TV. And we, we, and we go back, what we have done is report back on the five initiatives that people voted for. And we've, we've done it each year. Mm -hmm. We listen first, mm -hmm. and we report it back mm -hmm. each year. We give a, and not just on TV, we have a printed uh, a report card. Mm -hmm. that is but true. I think that, and, but here again, a, a lot, we've done a lot here with the part of safe instance, uh, I, my focus has been on uh, reading and authors. Around reading, a basic skill. And I look at our summer winter reading club program in the winter. Now, most libraries in the country have one reading club program. I've been here, we've had two. Summer reading club program, winter reading club program. And my challenge has been to the, all the athletic franchises and cultural institutions. When our families and children read, I want them to have free admission to the zoo, Tampa Gardens, uh, West Missouri Historical Society. We've gone to the Cavaliers, the Indians, and the Brown, and they get there free. 
and I've read at the Botanical Gardens. And so we've done that. And the first part that came regarding that was the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo. Their objective was to increase the attendance to the zoo from the east side of Cleveland. Mm -hmm. And I wanted a partnership, so uh, we had our partnership. And it's worked five years now. And we were there, uh, I think, April the 13th, or one side in April. And 49% of the gate count for the zoo on that Saturday was from our reading program. No kidding. 3,003 to 93 people. Four, represent 49% of the gate count on that Saturday. Outstanding. And that, that's, and, but here again, you look at the faces of families. The same when we read at the Botanical Gardens, uh, I read there with the, with the, uh, with the manager, with celebrity readers, families come, diverse all over, mm -hmm. come for that. And, and people say, it, oh, they just, uh, they enjoy it. You see the families. But look at the introduction to our children, future uh, in, our, in our Cleveland community, for, by reading. You should have seen them when they go to the Cavaliers, they either put on the library, made on the marquee or the Browns down here, Browns, Browns game uh, uh, there. And they won that year, when first day that I was here, we, when they flipped the coin, mm -hmm. they called out the top reader. From the one with Reese Ryan, the top, top readers went out to the field mm -hmm. and flipped the coin. Oh, no kidding. And about 70,000 people. And then I looked up here, this, this, this plane comes through with, a, with something here about the libraries. I said, what? We had one of our staff members has a friend who <laughs> is active in, in that. I'm looking up, and up oh, above. No, this is the Browns. I was in the Browns game, and I just, it's just something about it. But, but you see uh, people. And then, then I was at, we had a town hall meeting at, at Huff Branch uh, recently. My grandmother's in there, and said, Venable? I said, yes. I don't know her. She said, Mr. Venable, yes. This is all we had. And I had never, this is the work comments I remember forever. We have computers in the branches and all. For, okay. And what happens, and I looked at the computers, and I said, but four young men, the boy sitting there, are any of these yours? She said, two of my grandsons. And she was so proud. I said, I'm so glad that you as a grandmother are here in this library system. Yes. Yes. She said, I never heard. This is all we had. Yes. Things have closed around them. Yes. Garden Valley Branch, we, we just opened them. We look at the Garden Valley Branch, a lady was in there, saw me. That's all we had. Yes. yes. And talking of the mindset, I was at Garden Valley. A mother has a son who lives in Columbus, Ohio. I mentioned that uh, they had, the Columbus Public Library, they have uh, surplus furniture sales, and she thought a new, new library is going to come over there in the Bridgeport Plaza. Going to have to buy some used furniture. But she said, oh, i got to bring him here to see this. I said, in first class, but here's the mindset. Yes. In urban community. There's no, Cleveland's yes. no different than Detroit. In the inner city, yes. you have to keep hope alive. And I think that's people vote uh, uh, because they believe in you. There's a confidence in you. When Councilman told me, Venable, they vote. You forget something, they have confidence in you. And they vote their confidence in spite of poverty. And we have literacy needs and major issues, uh, job losses. But the, the, that library is a beacon of hope. Mm -hmm. And one thing in this country is permitted. Because mm -hmm. the public library movement came along to indicate the average citizen would have access. Rich and wealthy always had libraries. Critical. But, but located in your neighbor community now, if, if we choose not to use it. And one thing I remember in Cleveland, I came in 1975. And I'm in the game of W.O. Walker Award, William O. Walker Award. But one day I had to let them know I met this man. 1975, uh, Dr. Fern Long sent me over, to, she was deputy director, sent me over to the to call a post to get the endorsement for the levy. She must have called, no, she knew Dorothy Fulheim, some others. Mm -hmm. Zemmer Watson, George Sullivan. Mm -hmm. I went over there, I had read about him, heard about him, I'd never met him. W.L. Walker. Yes. The guy there, and the words he said to me that day, I said, oh, yes, Mr. Walker. I know we don't use them enough. But we still need them. That's why you get the endorsement. I know we don't use them enough, but, you, but we still need them. That's just as true then as 1975 in urban areas now for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's how when I first met him, and then he sat me down and gave me some political lessons. Wow. <laughs> but I met him in 1975. But you certainly have made them appealing. because. I've heard about this uh, new branch in Garden Valley, <laughs> and I hear it is packed with it record is. numbers. It is. 7200 uh, 7, Kinsman Avenue, and I've been worried uh, uh, about the branch because we were in the Garden Valley neighborhood house. We were behind mm -hmm. off the main street, and we were the only tenant. And I did, you know, concerned about safety and security for our staff and 
some didn't want to go to work and all, and when we get to the main street, and I fought to get on the main street, and I, work, and I wanted on the, not in a middle unit, no, I wanted on the corner. Okay. And so we got that and agreed with that. And, and oh, yes, we have a computer lab. Yes. We have things for children, seniors and all. And, and, and here again, with them, among others, who are there on the main street, main, yes. main, going from the alley to the main street, that's what I call it. And, and you see that and said, you can keep hope alive. Because for some of our children, that's the only access to computers. What a legacy. And I want to just say that I understand we have another library coming on the corner in the Main Street. You want to share a little bit about that? <laughs> well, the board, now, now here again, it's t partnerships and collaborations. Yes. Now, Buckeye Development uh, uh, Corporation and uh, John Hopkins and Eric Connison, neighbor, Neighbors in Progress, Inc., mm -hmm. uh, they came to me uh, uh, a few years ago, about three or four years ago, about wanting to get a new Rice Branch Library. We were on the old one over there next to the uh, on East 116th Street. So we had dialogue. And at least it came, they had plans. They had some money too, some plans. So we had dialogue, and I said, well, if we're going, we must be, we will be they will have a new Harvard Rice School, but we must be on the corner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, no, no. I thought we must, because a lot of get buried, the libraries get buried, but we must be on the corner and site. What corner is this? Uh, it's the, it's the uh, uh, southwest corner of East 116th Street and Shaker Boulevard. So, uh, so we're able to have consensus, and they everyone finally agreed that the library would be on the corner, and the school would have butt on the over the old St. Luke's property, mm -hmm. hospital property, and so we've been developing from that a collaboration. But here again, it happens when different parties sit down and can talk, yes, and get together. We got together on that, but a fourteen thousand square foot building is going to go up there. But we got a con uh, architect's contract. I think it should go up for bid maybe in September of this year. We hope to be in there in September two thousand nine. Okay. On the corner site, why is the corner so important? Visibility. Right. And you can have windows where people, people can see in a little bit to see That's your collections, right. to see people. Yes. And, you, and, and you, you can, there's a radius to uh, uh, not, not far from Shaker Square development, mm -hmm. so it's still part of history. Mm -hmm. Still maintain the Buckeye development history. Mm -hmm. And you have the, we have the Metro Health Center there now, where, 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 where our branch is. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you have a shopping area. Right. And I'm hopeful that. Um, from that vantage point, I'm hoping that the RT staff, RT local unit is right there at, uh, at uh, East 160th Street in Shaker. I hope they have an elevated platform uh, uh, style where you can see, from there you can see oh. the, 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 the Cleveland. Okay. And they're going to have a coffee shop, things like that. Sure. I would hope, hope there's vision enough to have it elevated because you can get appreciation from that yes. vantage point to see As Cleveland. you travel from the suburbs yeah, and, and, yes, to right. downtown. And, you go, and, and you're traveling west. Yes. You can look all around. You can look over. See, you can see the shopping plaza. You know, what we have over there off, off, off of Buckeye. Mm -hmm. You can see the Metro Health Center. You can look around. You can see Shaker Square from there. Nice. It would be nice. And they got great development of the St. Luke's property. Sure. So, sure. but I'm so happy that, that we've got. Since I've been here, we have got the contract. Yeah. It's all approved, yeah. and it's just a matter of bidding. Yes. But that, and I'm very happy with that. And I and I also want to say that as I walked through Cleveland State University. <laughs> Yes. The, the, the universities were linked. Yes, they are. They yes, were they are. linked. You yes, want sir. to share and, and, and This is what we have, the uh, Library Connection Lounge. Is what we call it a Connection Lounge. And that's novel in the country, I think, where uh, Dr. Schwartz and others who supported that came to us and we wanted to have um, a collection there, a browsing collection for faculty and staff and public, mm -hmm. whereby uh, not, not, not the curriculum books, but this provides a general reference collection, a popular collection, and it's used. But here again, this introduces the public library to the students of Cleveland State University and the faculty. And all is well used. And it, 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 where it's located, it's very pivotal. You walk in, you see it. Mm -hmm. But you have the Cleveland Public Library, Peters University. You see mm -hmm. that too as well as Cleveland mm -hmm. State. Here's an urban, urban university working together with the Cleveland Public Library. That's our, so we have three of those. Outstanding. We have one at Case West Missouri University. No kidding. And we have one at uh, Myers College. No kidding. Yeah, we, we call them our library connection lounges. Wow. And, but here again, Years ago, uh, when I first came to the library in 1970, you'd open your doors if you came in fine. You know, but you can't operate that way. There's competition around you. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I think you had to reach out. Our outreach is strong here. Mm -hmm. But the outreach is paying dividends because our, all of our output measures, our statistical use is up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be up without, that, without these partnerships. Right. Because right. that helps our circulation, increase yes. our circulation, our attendance. Yes. Our use of our meeting rooms. People realize the library is a treasure. Uh, people register to vote in libraries. Mm -hmm. in, in 13 branches, they vote. We have m m m many of the uh, uh, 
uh, organizations who, who, who try to get information to the public are located in our, they, they have tables there and they, they, and they distribute information. It's a critical, critical part of the community. Yeah. And the other point is that I used to be in Washington. I lived in Washington, D.C. and I, I lived in uh, uh, Garen, about 29 miles from Chicago. And I'd be there and I said, well, now I'm in Cleveland. I lived in Cleveland before, before I left. I was here 20 years before I left and went to Garen. Mm -hmm. I said, why can't we have authors? So I was, <laughs> why can't we have authors? I've been seeing them in Baltimore and Washington and other places I've gone to. And I came back here and we found a, a fund here. So when I was installed as director, and this is what I gave the board when I was first installed, uh, that, that first in June of 2000, uh, mm -hmm. uh, when I started in uh, 1999, this is my platform, mm -hmm. the People's University of Triumph for Excellence. And I said, I want this library to become known as the Mecca for presenting award-winning authors. And we do it on 2 p.m. on Sundays. And we can have a game downtown Cleveland, but I'll tell you one thing, 250 people or more pack this auditorium to hear an award-winning award author. I've been there, and it's and, outstanding. Yeah, it's out, and it's diversity and all, but here again, puts Cleveland on the map. It does. And it's free. Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard some people say, well, other, I've seen them and had to pay other places, but and I said, no, I'm not going to use that fund to buy something from office. No, I'm going to use that fund for the people. And I've just seen it because that lifts up Cleveland. And it, it does something for, to enhance our cultural environment. And for the mind on reading, here reading both summer and winter. Mm -hmm. we, and we bring authors here for the team read week. We bring authors here. Sister Soldier's coming shortly, uh, but but we bring authors for the children's programs. Bring authors for the uh, for, uh, for for the winter reading program, mm -hmm. and then we have the Sugarman's Award. Mm -hmm. We just had that, and and and, and we're benefactors of the Sugarman family. Uh, uh, when her husband died, Norman Sugarman, she gave money for in a, in a special endowment here that, to support. Uh, Children's biographies in the nation, and it's the only program like it in the country. Mm -hmm. She was here the weekend. She's 92 years old, and we're here, and they just had a great time. The top award is $5,000 for an author. No kidding. That comes from that family. And she always liked Cleveland. She always used to be in our children's room. No she kidding. liked it. And she, here again, her husband died. She wanted to do that, and her family is very pleased. Here again, on reading. Reading. And, we have, and that's why the author of this book I, I, I met here. Isn't that something? But, but, but this here again, but writing biographies for children. Yes. yes. But here, that's in at Cleveland Public Library. That's nowhere else. That's wonderful. You have really so done an outstanding job. Now, you've been in the, this director's position since? Since 1999. Since 1999. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the things that you've accomplished in that amount of time is uh, unprecedented, I'm sure. But it's the people who have accomplished, not me. I, the, the other one I'm proud of. Is this card? Ah, have to. This little, little, this little card. Yes. Uh, John Lonzak was a, was a director, the director of the California Public Library, and I went together on this card, and that's why we one of the we we received the Ohio Library of the Year for whatever year that was. I think it's two thousand. I think it's two thousand. Mm -hmm. Because I wanted to. Uh, well, when I first came here, uh, we weren't allowed to talk to county libraries then. No, that's how rigid. The nine separate public libraries that serve the county of Cuyahoga, Cleveland Public Library and Cuyahoga County Public being the largest. But no, no, I, I, that was the uh, way it was. Well, we went, so let's bridge this. Because many times, if you have a library card, they're really not looking to necessarily find out where you are. At least you have a library card. Yeah. So you can take this library card. It's called the Great Access Library Card. That he and, he and, we went together and created that. We had, uh, it was on uh, Leon Bibb's show to announce it and had to make certain that the mayors knew we weren't merging. Yes. We've got that, it was co collaboration. Collaboration. Yeah, and that's what, so we can have one card to go to all the libraries. That's outstanding. And I'm very happy with that because we had to overcome some past uh, ills, I think. Mm -hmm. That we can cooperate, we have to merge, we can be cooperative and have partnership, mm -hmm. and we don't have to merge, so that protects Cleveland and lifts us up. Oh, if one is up, everybody's Yeah, that's right, up. So, so and I'm very happy with that too. That's, that's a, and of course, uh, well, with his own library system, it has an automation consortium. Then what? An automation consortium called Clevenet. Oh, okay. There were 26 years. I was here when, when this was started many years ago. 26 years. And the philosophy, that was Dr. Urban Gaines did that. The philosophy of that was that um, it would get a mainframe, a large mainframe. The larger you are, you have an obligation, I think, for the smaller ones to, mm -hmm. assist, to assist them. 
So let's get our mainframe. Let's, 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 let's. We went to the Library of Congress classification. It was so large because it was expansionary. And uh, we automated our collections. And then once we took care of our needs, then we were able to let other libraries, about 30, 30 or 31, connect to us by way of contract to our system because of the connect, they connect to our collection strength. Mm -hmm. and that's called Cleveland. That was vision. You, no one does, you don't do things by yourself on the shoulders of others. Mm -hmm. and I'm very proud of that. But, but, but that's started with Dr. Gaines, and I was a business manager there. Mm -hmm. But that with, with, with that, we the, continue yeah, to yeah, build yeah. on those foundations. Yeah, then the other one, we, we, we started the uh, Know It Now service. Know It Now. I saw 24-7 online, online reference service, 24-7, 24, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And that was started uh, when I was here. We started under my leadership. And, uh, but, but here again, that, that takes us beyond the city environment. We were throughout the state a little bit. State, state Library embraced that and took it, and we still have it under our control because they couldn't quite do it totally. And mm -hmm. So we get funds for that, and uh, that, that gets us beyond the Cabot County mm -hmm. or Cleveland. That is, that, is, that is outstanding. So you're really about enlightenment, education, yes. reading. Yeah. That, that is information. It is. You it it provides a lifelong learning mm -hmm. process, and our children need that. Yes. And we, like we're supportive education to our schools, and our schools systems right now are strong partners on our reading club programs. Right. They weren't always that way. Yes. But the leadership now, no, no. And then another thing we did, uh -oh. uh, last September, we met certain every branch library and the main library has a complete set of the school textbooks, reference, on, they can't be circulated, but records. Because no, our youngsters don't all have textbooks. Wow. So that happened last September. That is wonderful. Oh. Partnership. And that is true. Yes, that we is don't. True. And, and when we came along to school, we had a textbook, but I learned that. I said, well, but here again, if, if our children matter, mm -hmm. we'll make certain the textbooks are available. So now uh, they are available, so you don't have to you can get your homework in a neighborhood branch or main library. So you can't take the books out, but at least they're, they're available. They're, you have access to the school textbooks for the Cleveland Metropolitan School System. That's a partnership it's under Dr. Sonner's leadership. That's wonderful. Yes. Outstanding things with this Cleveland Public Library system. Yeah, because uh, I mean, we have uh, John Moss is, uh, was a former trustee of the library board. He went to the uh, uh, school board, mm -hmm. and now uh, he's on uh, Friends of the Library. And we have a good partnership with our friends of the library, good, strong Friends of the Library. Mm -hmm. But that, he saw that there. And we came along and worked that out. And I think you talk about planning for the future, planning for a better citizen. Yes. Have access to school textbooks. Yes. Have resources there, computers on for homes and yes. businesses. You have that uh, accessible on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, and, long and the too. way your branches are situated, yeah. the students have that access. That's and right. what is um, so impressive to me is the way that you have incorporated technology yeah. so that we this this library system is truly positioned for future growth and development as it relates to providing services for the people, the best services. Yeah, I think it is, and we have a more customer service friendly staff. Yes. We, we, we have to all learn to do that. And that's come from marketing, uh, bookstores, anything, where else, in, in the marketing, you have to know your product, you have to have a different way of presenting it. And just, did you find what you're looking for? Good morning, may I help you? Did you find what you're looking for today? A smile? Yes. Uh, that, 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 that tells wonders. And I think that it's a lot of things are keep it short and simple, the small things. Yes. It's always a big thing. But I focus since my leadership has been on reading. Thank you. And the partnerships and connecting people to our product. We have been so blessed to have you stand on the shoulders of those who have I'm established from, yes. a lot. Yes. But I think uh, as we bring this interview to a close, it's, it's really clear that your legacy, through your leadership, you've helped to advance it for the next person that comes along. Well, I think in the words of Dr. Benjamin Mays, uh, one of my mentors, whatever one touches, his aim should always be to leave that which he touches better than he found it. And I met that man. I came up doing civil rights struggle. And, and, and I, didn't, I didn't want to embarrass my family, not my parents, my grandmother. My teachers, who my pastors, who have helped me, and I feel that no, I didn't embarrass them. And I think that's a, 
you know, students are going to be listening to this and, and doing research from this particular interview and the others in the collection. And that's a wonderful message to leave with them. Think about those around you yes. who will be impacted by your behavior. And I think each generation, each generation should do better than the previous one. That's what my teachers said to me. And one, th one thing about my, my school classes, Stanton, Virginia, over every blackboard was this one word, T-H-I-N-K, think. Over every blackboard. Hmm. I can always see that now, that word above. Every blackboard in every classroom of mine had the word think on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, it, 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 it's been a, it's been a, life is a challenge, life is a struggle, yes, but still, with the struggle, we have more access to some tools mm -hmm. someone didn't have coming up. And, we, and it's going to be hard work, yes. It is work. But I think, in my, in my mind, education is still the key. Mm -hmm. But we have more access to different types. When I came along, public administration, uh, transit system management, those things weren't there. But uh, it's only corporate world. It's a whole different world. I've learned. We've learned hospital administration. Mm -hmm. We've learned other parts of administration. I think that's, that's key. And they're all still involved people. Mm -hmm. And how we work and respect and support and try to still worry about the uplift of people. I think when we're in a job like this, what contribution are you going to make? And I think one should, okay, let's make a contribution to help people. Help people advance themselves. Yes. And especially for my race. Yes. We need people who want to care about and understand how do we speak of and promote our history in spite of struggles from the plantation. Yes. We achieved. We achieved. In spite of the struggles, we didn't come here by choice. Right. But we achieved. We helped to make this country. Right. And we have to lift that up to our people and our youngsters that be proud of that history. You, know, the, you don't let the Jews forget the Holocaust, do you? No. We can't forget the, 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 the really the plus and minuses of, of, of slavery. And if you stop, then you're the, the cause. Yes. You can't say, you can't put it on somebody no, else. No, the no. The onus. Yeah, it's on us. It's on us. Each person. Yes. Has to continue to move forward. That's, right. That's why I think everyone has a ministry. We, we all minister where we are. Mm -hmm. Each one of us ministers to somebody. And what was that quote one more time? Uh, whatever one touches, his aim should always be to leave that which he touches better than he found it. Thank you. That's from my mentor, Dr. Mays. I, I, that man I always admired. Thank you. I and think he, he was a teacher of Dr. Martin Luther King. Yes. Yes, he was. Dr. King was one of his students. And Dr. Mays also, what, what was the school? He was president, president of Morehouse College, the great Morehouse College. He was a president. But he, he also had communication with um, Tuskegee Institute. All the, yeah, yes, he did. Yes, yes, yes. And but, but what happened at that time we came along, uh, uh, our leaders were well, well read. Mm -hmm. They had studied, mm -hmm. and, they, and they could cite the references. And when they spoke, this world listened. When they spoke to Congress, mm -hmm. to the President, women and men, when they spoke, our leaders, when they spoke, this country listened. Mr. Venable, we just thank you so much. Is, are there any other parting <laughs> words that you want to encourage your young readers? Well, I, I, I think I encourage our young readers that always say, we are somebody. Okay. I am somebody. You are somebody. Yes. And why is that? Because our history tells us that. Yes. And our parents, our grandparents, we have a legacy that tells us that we can make a contribution. And no one's going to turn us back and keep striving for making yourself better. And leave what you touch. And, and, and leave what you touch better than you find. Thank you. And that's what you pass on to your children. Right, right. I think you've made that very clear and you've given <laughs> us a, 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 our marching orders and, and, and we want to thank you so very much for yeah. this interview. And I, I love this community. I met so many people. Did you? Oh, oh my goodness, I, mean, I can't call the names all of them. I know. But there were so many, like W. Walker was the one when they named that award, I got that award, something special about that award. 
You're right. What he said to me has guided me. And that was. You know, I know we don't use them enough. Yes. But we still need them. But we still need them. <laughs> we're closer. I knew we were running to the end. Oh. Okay. All right. Yeah, I thought that was a good close. Okay.